Hey guys, in this episode of Law Class Pro Patch Analysis, we will have pros from C9TL sharing their thoughts on Patch 5.5. So Bard is pretty weird looking. Uh, he's got some really unique skills, like the health pack, the windrunner shot, his E going through walls and the zonians on everyone. All of the abilities are pretty unique to League, although the health pack was in ARAM. I guess it's just put into an ability now. Um, I, I think he'll be really interesting. I just don't really know how effective he'll be because I don't know damage values on him. He could just be the strongest guy ever because he has so much utility and he'll have good enough damage to where he's going to want to be played. But it's hard to tell. Uh, usually when champions come out, everyone gets a first impression and the first impression is like always wrong. A Conquista came out last champion. Everyone was looking at it. She's like, ah, uh, you know, not that great. Uh, looks okay, start playing, or it doesn't feel that great, but it always takes a while. So we'll have to see, maybe about a month in, maybe Bart will be the next OP. But for now, it's hard to tell. Well, I saw the video for Bard coming out. He looks pretty fucking cool. He has the whole Miyazaki feel. He looks like the best design champion in like a long time. I don't know if he'll actually be that strong though. I'll have to see. Bard has basically three abilities that are not damaging at all. They're purely support. So this means he's not going to actually be that great in like a 2v2 type fight situation. He's more very much just a support character. His ult is very cool, especially like the, the super long range on it. But the fact that it's delayed, I think it's going to make it extremely difficult to make it impactful. Because you really want it to hit like certain targets in the team fight and not other certain targets. And the fact that it has the kind of like cast time and delay in travel is going to make it very difficult to use. Azir just received a range buff on his W, meaning he can cast it from farther away now. He'll probably need a few more rounds of buffs before he's back to a competitive state, but that's definitely a thing in the right direction. Craig has changed for patch 5.5. He might be played a little bit more since his base mana pull increased from 300 to 400. That's like 100 extra mana. And I think that's like two to three more spell casts. So he might be played a little bit more now. They buffed Cassidy's ultimate from what it was. It's now 500 range with a lower cooldown and decreased mana cost. I think this is enough to make him actually broken. So 500 range isn't that great, but the fact that it costs so little mana and that it has a very short cooldown makes it so that he's even more mobile than he was before, just for the sole fact of the shorter cooldown and the decreased mana cost. So I believe this should actually bring him stronger to what he was previous nerfs, but we'll have to see. So they've nerfed Lissandra's Q damage by a good amount, starting from 5 at rank 1 and more as you get a higher rank. I'm not entirely sure if this is enough to nerf her out of being first pick OP status, but it's probably something towards the right direction. She's She provides a lot of damage and CC at the moment, and they're nerfing a portion of that. So we'll see if it's enough to bring her out, but I believe she should still be super strong. On patch 5.5, they started doing some changes to Nautilus. They decreased his on-hit damage from his W. So now he'll be doing even less damage, which is one of the main problems with Nautilus. And they slightly increased um, the maximum health scaling that you get on your shield. So you're a little bit tankier than before, but you're doing less damage. And uh, the problem with Nautilus was never that he wasn't tanky enough. It was mainly that he just doesn't do enough damage. Nautilus is getting changed in this patch, and I think it looks almost more like a nerf than a buff to him because he's going to do less damage, and he already doesn't do very much damage to begin with. And the only compensation on his W is that he gets a little bit bigger shield on rank 1, which will help him with his first clear a bit, but his first clear is not that bad to begin with. Also, Nautilus's E is getting less damage, less slow, and less mana cost, and less cooldown. So basically, it's just weaker, but you can use it more often. At max rank, it's decent because it's about half the cooldown, but I would be surprised if it had a huge impact. Um, now your W in human form will have a set rate of damage that it does instead of having a ratio. So instead of it doing 10% of something's current health, it will do 20 damage flat, which is a lot, especially in the later levels when your traps tend to hurt quite a bit. Shivana's change on 5.5. She does more percent HP damage by 0.5%. Can't really tell on paper how much the buff was, but people will try and see how good she is. And if it feels good, she might be picked up. So Sion's getting his mana cost reduced on his Q when you level it up. And it was also getting a little bit of a bonus AD ratio on his Q. But at the same time, he's getting his E nerfed in mana cost by level. 
So what this means is that Sion's gonna have to max his Q in certain matchups that otherwise he would max E. But I think overall it's a nerf to matchups where you have to trade with your E, like in range matchups. But in melee matchups, the Q max was actually a pretty good thing to have. So this benefits more of melee matchups that you have, and especially if you go for an AD item like a Hydra, be really good with these changes. Skarner's getting literally the smallest buff I've ever seen. His Q is gonna do two more damage per rank at all ranks, and so. It won't really change anything. His other change is the base damage on his E going up by 60 at max rank, which is decent, but you don't really max E until last anyway, so I don't think these changes will do anything to Skarner. The Sona changes are just a mana reduction on her ult in later levels, and that really doesn't matter that much, so she's basically the same. So Jashana got a, uh, a nice change for her Q. So every time you're on attacking with your E on somebody, your explosive charge, you get one second off the cooldown of your Q. That means that it's way more rewarding actually hitting someone with it, even though you increase the damage, it didn't really feel like much because you just spent so much time like throwing the actual charge on someone rather than blasting them with autos. But that'll actually help you out and give you even more autos if you're autoing someone. So it's a pretty nice change. Uh, I don't know if it'll make her amazing or anything. She'll obviously be better, but I think she was kind of in a weird place uh, before this change anyways. So maybe this will help her out a lot. The trend changes for 5.5. .5. I think that's a pretty good buff on Trundle. Just having the healing regeneration from 8% to 20% starting from rank 1. It's a pretty huge buff. And people might start playing Trundle again just to try that out. Because if you have like Bam Scepter first or early buy, then it's just increased by 12% healing regeneration. That's pretty big. They might start playing Trundle again. Regrets changes are pretty interesting. He got less base values on his shield, but got his scaling uh, mana ratio. So like... 8% mana addition to the base shield for your god. What this means is when you get your mana immune, maybe frozen hard, you'll be, I don't, I don't know how much more tankier it is, but it's it's definitely tankier than, uh, than before. So it's a little bit of a buff. I don't know it's going to help him too much. I don't really think that was his issue. But then they also changed his, uh, his ulti to have less cooldown, which is always nice. But I think Urgot's main issue is how easily he's countered by QSS. And... I think you lose the RMR if someone QSS is your ulti. So I think if that can get fixed, Urgot might be in a pretty good spot. But for now, not too amazing changes. Although they are nice, maybe maybe someone will whip out the Urgot. So the Varus change is, I think it's actually pretty nice. Uh, the way it works is right now on this patch, like not 5.5, .5, when you charge up your Q, it waits until you actually throw the second part of the Q. They start the cooldown, whereas on 5.5, .5, it's gonna make it so that it starts the second you start charging the Q. So that means you're not really punished for holding out the shot and trying to get the perfect aim for your uh, your long piercing arrow. So it's a pretty nice buff. I don't know if it's gonna make him amazing or anything, but obviously it helps. Uh, I think he still has a mobility problem where everyone around him is flying around, jumping like crazy, and then he's just kind of on his own, trying to peel him for himself, just dying. So for Viker, they made his Q move a bit faster, and they made his E pop up a lot faster before. But the fact that it still has a delay, I think, still kills Viker. He was pretty reliant on it being instant, so I still think he's going to be basically dead as a support champion. Vi got slightly nerfed this patch. Instead of her ult doing 200 damage level 1, the ulti will do 150 damage level 1. And it will still scale to 450, but this will pretty much just make her first ultimate not as brutal as before. They also decreased her movement speed, which is not a huge deal, but it is something to note um, that she's going to be a little bit slower than before because on some champions, for example, Nautilus, he has a base of 325 movement speed and Avai has 350. So that means that once the Nautilus have boots, they're still only even move speed wise. So this this is a good this is a good nerf to buy because for having so much mobility with her Q, uh, her base movement speed is simply too high. For Zinjiao, they ended up helping his early game a little bit. They increase the heal on every third hit at the first two levels. It still scales to the same amount, but it'll be really noticeable level one that now you just have more sustain. And they also increase the base damage on Xinjiao E from 70 to 210 uh, to 70 to 230. Bolivar's W is getting half cooldown if he used it on a neutral minion, which should help his jungle clear by a lot, but I don't know if that will is actually a good champion. So I guess we'll see. Zack is getting a tiny buff on his E, increasing the duration from 0.5 seconds to 1 second on the knockup. I've never 
tried having a longer knockup on him, but I guess it'll help more for all periods in the game. And maybe combined with the tank changes in his jungle, he'll be good again. So they changed Zillion's Q cooldown to have a lower cooldown from rank 1, but at rank 5 it's the same. I don't really think that does anything for him in the long run, as it's it's nice early game, obviously, but his current issue isn't like being able to like throw enough bombs, it's just like landing bombs easily and like it doing enough. So I don't really see him coming into play often. So Bombing Cinder is kind of going to be a mini Sunfire that you get in the jungle. It builds into Sunfire, it also builds into the jungle items. And um, it's a little bit less cost efficient than uh, Giant's Belt. It costs a thousand gold and you only get 300 health as opposed to 350. But the passive that it gets you is pretty nice. It deals five damage plus one per champion level. So by the time you get this, you'll probably be level five, six or seven. So you'll be doing 10 extra magic damage per second. And that, has, that actually is increased by 50% to minions and monsters. So this will really help tank junglers and things that don't innately clear the jungle fast. Um, catch up to some of the faster jungle clears. The Cinder Hulk will be the new tank jungle item. It gives 350 health, so it's a little bit lower than Juggernaut, and it, but it gives 25% bonus health, so it's really good for champions that are able to stack health, mainly tanks. And the way it works is while in combat, you deal 16 plus one damage per champion level. So by the time you get this, you're probably level nine, level 10, you're doing 26 damage. And the damage ramps up over time while in combat to a maximum of 24 plus 1.5 uh, damage per champion level. So in extended trade, this um, item will actually be super strong and it's going to actually really do sustained damage. So if you're killing like a tank, you're not, or you can't just blatantly ignore a tank. You're going to have to kill him early in the fighter and you'll just end up taking a lot of damage from this item. So the new jungle enchant is Cinder Hulk getting rid of Juggernaut. They had a change like this at the end of season four where they took off the tenacity from the jungle item and gave percent bonus health. And so I think this looks worse to me at first impression because tenacity is really huge for junglers. You're not going to have that anymore. So I guess you'll be a little bit stronger late game with the bonus health, but you might have to buy Merc Shreds if they have a lot of CC. On top of that, it doesn't look like there's any sustain on the item anymore, which is a pretty big nerf because most junglers don't have that much sustain. And so if you have to just get beat down through your entire jungle clear with this item, you'll never be full health for fights. Okay, so there's a new item in the game called Ludens Echo. It's the new 120 ability power item. And we've definitely been needing one. There's one that provides a lot of damage. There's another one that provides survivability and utility. This one provides movement speed. And it's definitely a different change from the other two. And it's not an item you'll ever rush. I don't ever think you buy this item first or second. I definitely think this is just a third item you build. Say, like, for example, you have your Death Cap and your Aggro already. Then you build this item. I don't foresee many people going Death Cap, then Luna Zeko, then Hourglass last. I think Hourglass provides more utility than this. But this is a nice damage alternative to the other items in the game. And I think it's a good addition. Okay, so Raptor Cloak and ZZ Rap Portal both got a number of buffs. ZZR Portal before was a completely troll item and was not viable at all. Now it looks like it might be a better troll item. I, don't, <laughs> I doubt it'll still be, I doubt it'll be used in competitive, but it seems like a decent Solgu item. Now for Righteous Glory, that it was already a good item. It's already an item that's got a lot on supports like Annie, for example, Blitzcrank, and plus 150 health is a big buff, so it's gonna be even better. This new um, jungle, there'll be a couple changes to the items, but there's also changes to the camps itself. For Grom, the base damage is decreased to 83 from 90, so it'll just do a little bit less damage. And then the poison um, or above from Smiting Grom now additionally skilled with 10% of the champion's bonus health. So this just means the tanks will kill Grom faster than before, since there was no bonus health scaling or there was no benefit from having health before against this camp. Also, the Merc Wolf camp has had some gold increases to it. The big uh, wolf now gives 53 gold, which is up from 42, so that's 15 extra gold right there. And then the two small ones give an extra uh, eight total gold. So when clearing the camp, you'll essentially just have uh, 23 gold that you didn't get before. So that's just like a nice change to give junglers a little bit more gold. And then also the the raptor camp was just too strong. Like it did way too much damage for how little the rewards were. The base damage on the razor beak, which is the main one, has been decreased to 45 from 55, so that does a lot less damage. And then the small raptors now deal four less damage than before. So total, you're really just getting hit by 22 less damage, like a second or every attack by the raptors. These changes seem to 
uh, affect the jungle a lot. The tanky junglers are just going to be better than before. I'm not sure until I play how good they'll be, but it seems like they'll just be a lot more viable. So you might see a lot more uh, Sejuani for sure. And I think Amimu will make a comeback and just the strong tank jungler uh, meta will, will come back in my opinion. So I think this is actually a pretty good change for tank junglers. It's going to kind of create more passive games between junglers, which is kind of unfortunate. But I still think that uh, it's good to have some strength in the jungle and some champion variety instead of just seeing uh, bruisers in the jungle consistently. So the decreased amount of gold you get from inhibitor and nexus turrets, and they also decrease the experience from both of them. So now when you get inhibitor turrets and nexus turrets, you don't get any experience and the amount of gold you get is severely decreased. So they're kind of punishing you for killing inhibitor turrets and nexus turrets versus rewarding you extra. Cause like those are hard turrets to kill. And now they, they haven't gotten any easier to kill, but they decreased your rewards from. So it's just kind of weird for them to do that. And another change they did was the inner turrets. So the mid inner turret doesn't have a shield anymore. It just has increased health, 1300 from 1000. The top and bottom turret have a shield still. It's a 30 shield. It's decreased from 200. I don't really know if that actually does anything. So these changes are kind of weird, but I think I like the inner turret changes. I just don't like the inhibitor or nexus turret change. I think those are bad.